Order! 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 You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Failing to keep your garden tidy or having a dog who barks excessively could land you with a criminal record under powers introduced by Theresa May when she was Home Secretary. Thousands of so-called community protection notices have been issued by local authorities since they were introduced in 2014. But the campaign group, the Manifesto Club, claims the powers are being abused in some instances and amount to an attack on privacy. We'll speak to them in a moment, but first, here's Theresa May explaining the thinking behind the new powers back in 2012. Earlier today, I launched our white paper on antisocial behaviour. This new approach empowers local communities, places victims' needs at, the, at its heart and puts more trust in the professionals than ever before. And so it perfectly complements our approach to wider local policing. A lot of what's called antisocial behaviour, of course, is actually crime, and it should be taken seriously and it should be dealt with. Yet more than three million incidents of antisocial behaviour are still being reported to the police each and every year, with many more doubtless going unreported. It's clear that the old top-down approach to the problem hasn't worked. It was too bureaucratic, too complex and too time-consuming. So we will make powers simpler, quicker, easier to enforce, more flexible and more effective. Well, that was Theresa May as Home Secretary. I'm joined now by Josephine Appleton from the Manifesto Club, which has produced this report, and by the Conservative MP Royston Smith, who used to be leader of Southampton City Council. Welcome to both of you. Josephine, first of all, a lot of people would say that antisocial behaviour blights their lives and councils need more powers to tackle them. What's wrong with that? I think it depends what you define as antisocial behaviour. And actually, the test for introducing one of these CPNs is incredibly low. It only requires a council official to judge that your activity has a detrimental effect on the quality of life of the area. And they can essentially write you out a document telling you you must do something or must not do something if you break it as a criminal offence. I think this really takes the criminal law into unprecedented uh, areas and, and really makes the question of what's a crime and what's not a crime extremely subjective. Right. Can you actually sort of paint a picture for us? I mean, how many of these community protection notices are being issued and how many of them are inappropriate in your view? I mean, there's, there was the first research that we've done is uh, within the first year there were 4,000 notices issued. Um, and because the Home Office doesn't actually keep stats on it, it's quite <laughs> difficult to work out uh, what they are. But uh, basically the majority seem to be for messy gardens. Um, and we received the text of some of the notices and they included things such as you must not sleep in bin stores, um, you must uh, not busk in this town centre. You know, really quite, quite broad ranging powers. Um, within the home you must not shout or argue or put your television on such that it can be overheard. Um, I think that the problem is not necessarily councils, but really the, the, the existence of these extremely broad powers in the first place. Um, and where anything is actually seri serious, there are existing powers that can deal with it. Mm. Uh, well, let me put, is, right, sorry. well, let me put that to Royston Smith. I mean, those examples, having a messy garden, um, shouting or arguing in your own home, surely these can't come under community protection notices, which could be then regarded as a crime. Well, I think they, I think they should. You know, when Why? constituents come to see me, it's not because someone's having a loud conversation at three o'clock in the afternoon. It's because they are shouting and screaming at four o'clock in the morning, keeping people awake and causing, you know, absolute havoc in in the local area. The bushes one's a prime example where bushes and trees and things are allowed to encroach onto the highway. Partially sighted people walk into them. Mothers with babies can't get past them. Councils enforce that to make sure that people can't do it. And these CPNs are a tool in order to do that. So it depends where you want to look at it. Right. Is it too heavy-handed at all, then? Because, yes, the low-level disruption that you're talking about, that people come and complain to you about in your constituency, one can understand. But is this too heavy-handed a way of dealing with it? Well, I don't think it is. For a start, it doesn't just happen that you get served a notice. First, you get a letter from the council saying that your trees are encroaching onto the highway or you're being antisocial or there's noise or swearing or whatever it else it is and you get a warning and you're told to do something about that and that's not unreasonable it's checked by enforcement officers and environmental health and all the rest before you get the notice when you get the notice you then have another 21 days to appeal to a magistrate now if it was just a child crying 
I don't think any magistrate <coughs> in the country would enforce that. Right. So I think there is a mechanism. Right. I mean, CPNs, we've spoken to the local government association, uh, Josephine Appleton, and they say CPNs actually offer a quick way, quick redress, if you like, for local residents' concerns. And this is ahead of before you get to any criminal prosecution. Um, I think that the, it's, these powers are seen as very quick. That's not always a good thing. Um, for councils to be able to use powers very easily and very quickly. It's not a good thing, for, in my view, for an officer to have a bit of paper where they can write in what thing you have to do, and if you don't do it, then it's a criminal offence. But what I if it's been disrupting neighbours and the, the local area where people are living uh, for a long period of time? And actually, the complaint mm. in the past has been that councils haven't had enough power to deal with people making noise every Friday and Saturday night, for example. I mean, would you not find that disruptive? Of course, and I think most people have had experience of problems with neighbours. Um, there are statutory nuisance powers, um, but they, they set a higher test, and it's an objective test, the definition of statutory nuisance. Detrimental effect, I've spoken to people in local councils when this law was coming through, and they said, what does detrimental effect mean? I don't know what that means. Um, and I think this is a very subjective test that hasn't actually been through the courts. Right. And um, yes, people have a right to appeal, but really the, the council should have to go to the court before they impose a law on you, rather than require that you employ your judge, um, employ your, your lawyer to defend yourself after the order's been imposed. I mean, you can see a situation where some councils abuse this power. Mm. I mean, there is a resident in Rotherham who was apparently ordered to clean their windows both inside and outside the house. Now, this will be an extreme, I presume. But they were um, told to clean their garden up and the bushes and the shrubs and everything. It wasn't just one thing in isolation. Right, but you think that's appropriate? Well, if those bushes are encroaching onto the highway and partially sighted people walking into them or mothers with babies have to walk out into the road in order to get past, then yes, I think that is appropriate. And should that person end up with a criminal record if they don't do it? They would in any event, wouldn't they? Right. It, say, it, it would become a criminal prosecution if it wasn't for this process. Right. So, I mean, even though you say, Josephine Appleton, there are things in place already to deal with them, they've obviously been ineffective. And actually, Theresa May apparently brought these in uh, because the mechanism under the Labour government was already too heavy-handed. So there are some protections in place. Um, I wouldn't say they've been ineffective. I think they're harder to use, but that's not a bad thing. I think so the examples given of obstructing the highway, that is a, an offence. It is an offence to create a statutory nuisance to your neighbours, interferes with the enjoyment of their property. That is an offence. There are noise abatement notices. I think, but detrimental effect, which is the category um, required to impose this notice, uh, has no legal definition. Nobody knows what it means. And so you have orders, such as in a current, currently in an Essex village, there are free-roaming peacocks, um, who the owner has been issued with an order to remove those peacocks within the next two weeks or receive a criminal record. And actually all the villagers have set up a petition and a Facebook group defending her because they love the peacocks. So I, mean, I think that really the, you, it's not about empowering community, communities, it's empowering certain council officers to write in a on a form what you have to do and what the penalty will be. Do you think um, they, and that or, becomes the law. Well, let me put that to Royce. Do you think they need reform in that instance? Do you avoid the sort of case that's just been described by Josephine Appleton? I think this piece of work is very helpful and it's helpful to government and I think government should look at it and take notice because if the process needs to be reformed going forward, then these things are very helpful. If you're going to start telling people they need to get rid of peacocks, well, of course that's not what it was set up for. If, however, people are arguing at four o'clock in the morning, night after night. This is exactly what this was for. Right. Do you think this has um, the susceptibility of being abused, it's too blunt an instrument, to deal with what are real issues, no doubt, <clears throat> being brought by uh, constituents? I, I think this is one of the problems that we have in all forms of government, that this sounds like it, that there's a certain looseness, subjectivity and inconsistency that drives people at the wall on both sides, those who want action from it and those who are on the, on the receiving end of it. And it sounds to me, the process certainly doesn't sound right that you have one of these orders and then you have the, you, you effectively have to fight it and you've got no way of going through. But we first. do need... The problem is we have a breakdown in community and a breakdown in the way that people behave that means that we have warring factions within different areas. And now we're starting to get to the stage where the state is intervening in that, which is a shame, but probably necessary. But I actually think the issue is there needs to be much stronger and stricter guidelines. Listening, I support some of the points you're making about protecting communities, but I'm listening there and saying what, what we have is something that's too loose. Right. There needs to be stronger and stricter guidelines of to exactly what can be en en enacted when and what counts. Right, Does Josephine Appleton, do you, I mean, are you saying you actually want to get rid of them altogether or would you be happy with them just to be reformed and the guidelines to be tightened up? Um, I can't really see any need for these, these powers. Um, they replace, At all? 
No. I mean, they replace litter clearance notices, which require that a land be defaced by litter in order to be imposed. And I think it seems that, that, that that's a category that's necessary. But in every other case, it seems that there's already another power. If it's serious, there's already another power that would deal with that. Um, and really, this is being used uh, to supplant other powers, even in some cases, criminal offences. So some people have received CPNs for smoking drugs in their home, for example. You know, really, there's a drugs law to deal with that. Um, however, the Home Office is currently re revising the guidance, um, and that's a positive step that could in improve people's rights to appeal them in court, for example. All right. Um, but our view is they need to be scrapped. Josephine Appleton and Royston Smith, thank you very much for coming in. I've been getting